Beautiful. Deep breath in. <laughs> you did great. You did great. Did that you? was great. That first one was like... That's <laughs> <laughs> Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you cannot massage a nail into a piece of wood. You have to take a hammer and hit it. You know, that... Whatever you want to call that. Your roof. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I can... Right there. Turn it side to side, see how we think. That feels way better. <laughs> I feel like I just slept. <laughs> I feel like I just woke up. So the past four or five years, I've just had extremely tight muscles, um, like hypertonicity, mm-hmm. and myofascial pain. Um, and the heart, the I would say the past two months, okay. I just started developing the tachycardia. What time of the day do you notice that? Morning, evening, um, time? Honestly, it's like throughout the day. Okay. Um, and if I'm moving, obviously, and standing up, it like will be more erratic. You feel your hands get cold or temperature changes? My hand, yeah, my hands and my legs have like circulation. Okay, and you had you had your medical doctors kind of go through some tests and MRIs, and they found yeah. kind of just no. I didn't really find it. Went through a full physical, and they were like, did they find elevated blood pressure, or did they, did they, when they measured you, did they see anything um, like that? I don't know. No, I think, no, my blood, my blood pressure. Nothing came back there. significant. So, yeah, no. so we're left with a neurological explanation, right? So there's nerves that come through your spinal column that transmit the signals from your brain to your body. One of the first things I was, I was telling you earlier, when, they, when you get to chiropractic college, the first thing they give us is a paper about 60 pages long where they had people, I don't know who signed up for this, where they took salt and injected it at every nerve root. And if you inject the lower back, for instance, you get pain radiating down your leg. And if you inject the upper neck, you get a headache. And if you inject the lower neck, you get pain down your arm. But not only did they get pain down the arm, they also got organ symptoms, which is elevated blood pressure, tachycardia, temperature changes. So the nerve comes out of your spinal cord, comes through a little hole, and it then bifurcates into two branches. One goes to your viscera, your organs, and one goes to your soma, your muscles and skin. And so when you have pressure in the spinal cord or even just inflammation in your spinal column, you can have irritation to both those. So arm symptoms, temperature changes, and heart palpitations. So I'm gonna sort of check out, I know the MRI didn't show any disc herniations, but because MRIs can't quantify every single piece of what causes symptoms, you can have bruising along the spinal column. You can have just inflammation back here that can cause a lot of symptoms. Over my practice, I've just seen more and more just we can't quantify everything that causes symptoms. We want it to be quantifiable. We want it to be visualized on a picture, but it's not always there for us. And I, I'm glad they did all that. They took out all the red flags. Nothing, you know, there's no k- crazy tumors or you know, scary stuff. They, they, they yeah. check for brain stuff. Um, but... We're going to now treat you from more of a perspective of let's try to clean the spinal column. Let's look at your posture and say, you know, your ear should be over your shoulder. There should be a curve in your neck. All of those things uh, put stress on our spinal cord. When there's no curve in your neck, these wires are held taut, which makes them easier to be irritated. When there's more curve in your neck, these wires are loose so they can flow easily outside of the spinal column to your body. Do a lot of sitting for a job. Is your work um, marketing or you do a lot yeah, of I, Yeah, I try not to though. I do, I get up and you I try move. to move, you okay. know, because I know. So the sitting is this phone, Yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's killer. Okay. So, wow, you got this. Your left shoulder is, have you noticed that? Have you noticed your left shoulder is high? <laughs> Both of them, I feel like they go in. But not only, that, not only that, is it rounded, but this left shoulder is high. You have an injury. It's more that you have an injury on the right side of your neck. So what happens is when I... If I have an injury on the right side of my neck, my head tilts left, and then I drop my right shoulder to, does that make sense, keep my eyes level. You got it? So straight forward, and we're dealing with about an inch forward. So the more forward your head goes, the muscular stress is amplified by the more your head is forward. Does that make sense? So yeah. try to, you know, we got, we know, it's not just about muscularly pulling your head back. I want you to have good posture, and that's where you want to be, not by forcing it. When you bring your head up, look up at the ceiling. Is that hurt to do that? Show me. Um, it's honestly really tight here. Tight in the front. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and just turn your head left. Any pain when you turn? On the right side? 
How much? What would you? How would you quantify that pain? And what would you describe that? Just like it's, I can feel it's just pulling way more than it should be. And then turn your head right. And is it do the same on the left or? Yeah, out here actually. All on the right side, whether you turn your head left or right. Yeah, it's definitely more. But not on the left. No. Right. Remember how I said there's an injury on the right side of your neck? Yeah. So <laughs> there's an injury on the right. When you turn your neck left or right, Ed, it hurts here. Part of why your right shoulder is low is because your neck, like I said, tilts left to get away from it. It's called antalgia. Your neck tries to get away from what hurts, and then your shoulder drops to keep your eyes level. If we walk around with our head tilted, it makes us dizzy. Your eyes always seek the horizon. It's called a writing reflex. Because there's an injury on the right side of your neck, the left side is going to compensate. So you're going to inflame the left side over time, especially the left lower neck. Do you understand? Because you have an injury here, your head tilts left, and do you see how you're going to pinch? Yeah. That, because you're in avoidance of this, now you're going to pinch this. The left side of your upper back is where the nerves that go to your heart. Okay? So the <laughs> you're yeah. connecting the dots. Yeah. <laughs> the left side of your upper back, T1 through T4 on the left side, forms the cardiopulmonary nerve that then is the gas pedal. It's the nerve that excites your heart. So this, these postural distortions have probably been going on for more than your heart symptoms. You're saying these were probably going back to your teenage years injuries, but now we're finally getting to you were inflaming this side because of the head getting away from that right side. Like you were saying, I, I'm always doing this. I'm always like right. trying to relieve tension here in the back of my neck and my. Because of your posture and because of all this tightness up here, abuse here, the joints in your lower neck give you pain into your shoulders. Yeah. We call this a referral, referral pain, is the joints in the neck give pain in these areas. So it's, I know it hurts here, part of it is the tree roots, there's overlap, there's the attachments are down here, levator scapula, you know, a lot of muscles from your neck attach into your shoulders, so the more forward your head goes, the more those roots pop out of the ground, and they're inflamed, there's tendonitis, there's inflammation there. And just pushing it down can alleviate it temporarily, but all over over time we have to get the head back in order. Otherwise, it'll just repetitively keep happening. There's two nerves that go to your heart. We you were talking about the vagus earlier. We were mentioning how yeah. the vagus nerve is the parasympathetic or the calming nerve to your heart. Stress shuts down that nerve, so that's essentially the brake pedal to your heart, and then the gas pedals from your upper back. And those two both work yin and yang to balance and to control the function of your heart. Neck thing is, <laughs> it freaks me out. It's okay, everybody, I'm so glad. Like, how does that work? <laughs> we'll, we'll go over everything, I'm not gonna, I don't rush. I've never been accused of not explaining myself. Uh, if you'd like a quiet visit, it costs double. You know, right, right, No right, talking right, right, yet, right. Uh, and all the air out. There you go, here we go. Beautiful, deep breath in. <laughs> you did great, you did great. Exhale. Breath in. Let it out. There you go. Let it out. Chin down a little bit. Good. All right. You're good. Not too bad, wow. right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. That first one was like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a deep breath in. It's okay. Exhale and twist. Exhale. It's okay. All right. Other side for me. Very good. Okay. Deep breath in. Exhale. It's okay. I know. There we go. Good. Let's go face up for me. Very good. We purposefully use the word adjustment and not the word manipulation because mm -hmm. we're trying to adjust certain areas without adjusting other areas. A manipulation would be, let's see how many pops I can get out of your whole mm -hmm. spine. So the lower neck, like I said, influences your upper back. When your lower neck is overstressed, you actually recruit your upper thoracic to assist in turning your neck. Your neck is designed to work from the top first, the bottom last. You have an injury on the upper part of your neck, which is going to cause your lower neck to be overstressed. When your lower neck is overstressed, it's going to look around for some help. <laughs> Who's here to help me? It's going to make your upper back do it. I usually pick on Larry King, sorry. <laughs> Larry King was, my, was our poster child for not turning with his neck, right? If you saw Larry King turn, he would do this. With right? his body. Do you see what I just did? Yeah. I just recruited my upper back to assist in turning my neck, right? Because my neck can't turn. I'm going to use my chest to turn. Do you follow mm -hmm. me? So now, when you do that repetitively over time, you're going to inflame, irritate the upper back. 
And it feels lovely, Ed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this gets tight up here at the top, and this is that, like I said, that injury on the right that we're going to be picking on. And when you see the gua sha marks on my videos, that's mm -hmm. going to happen on the right side here, <laughs> because in, internally, the area that's been injured has been sequestered, it's been walled off, it's been isolated, it's been stiffened, does that make sense, mm -hmm. to protect itself. Now you have the compensatory inflammation on the left, but right here. All right. There's a nice knot right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't make light of it. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix it. If, if your neck felt normal, I'd be confused, right? If, if, you know, with those kind of symptoms, when you turn your neck and you feel pain, you're moving, you're asking the joint to move. And first of all, you're, when you're turning your neck, if the upper neck isn't working, you're actually asking your lower neck to do much more than what it's designed to do because the primary engine isn't functioning. But what I can do is I can make you not bend there so much so, hey, it doesn't hurt to turn my neck anymore, <laughs> right? So it's, it's a move, it's spreading the peanut butter over the whole piece of bread. You got it all clumped up in one lump and I'm going to move and spread the stress over a larger surface area. And that's what we do here. Yeah, it's just smooth the whole way down here. This is the abused side. The left is compensating and doing extra, and that's why it hurts. But the right is the is the original injury side. Let's go back over here. Right there. Yeah, I can feel the it's right the there. difference. Yeah. yeah. Right there. Not inside. So like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're cautious and apprehensive about somebody touching your neck because someone adjusting your lower neck would not be good for you. <laughs> we really? want to be, right, so if you have an area of injury and somebody keeps on spraining it, right, if you have a sprained ankle and somebody starts twerking your ankle around, <laughs> they're just further injuring it, right? That's where the skill level of the, or what do I say, cognition of the doctor needs to be. Let's leave that area alone and let's work on the surrounding areas to take stress off of it, right? So. <laughs> Take it, I think of it like a nail to a piece of wood. You cannot massage a nail into a piece of wood. You have to take a hammer and hit it. Now, ligaments define the posture. So after we get the bone loosened up, we now have to stretch to retain it. So the one fallacy that was early in chiropractic was they thought that adjustments change posture permanently. You have to stretch the rubber bands that wrap the spine to change where the spine is permanently. If you think about it, it was stretching, sitting, school, life forward is what rounded us forward. It's counter stretching that undoes it. It's a stretch that got us here, it's a stretch that gets us out. And that's, but in order to pr safely stretch you, you have to ensure that the whole spine is working. Yeah, that one is. This is the abuse, this is your heart right here. Right there is your heart. Right there, that's the nerves. The top two nerves, T1 through T2, that form the, car the cardiopulmonary nerve. Your sympathetic fight or flight mm -hmm. gas pedal to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Let this side go over here, chin up. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. You did great. You did great. His stuff. His stuff. This is where your neck belongs, way back here. Your neck belongs in a curved position. This relieves pressure tethering on the nerves. So this is where, you know, the MRI x-ray doesn't show that tethering. It doesn't help us understand that everything doesn't have any room for movement. You know, like Muhammad Ali, you know, rope -a -dope. You know, he kind of moves, rolls with the punches. <laughs> you know, the, the nerves can roll with the punches when there's a curve in your neck, but when it's straight, they're kind of stuck in a in one position. They can't just get knocked in the face. So how do you get the curve Stretching. We got, back? Well, we got to get your neck loosened up, right? So we got to get your neck moving. If it, if it doesn't move properly, then we can't actually stretch deep enough or safe enough that we don't 
further just irritate your lower neck. We want your whole neck to be working when we stretch. So the orthotic that we're going to show you at the end of the visit, how to stretch on, and that's, that becomes your chiropractor. And then your inability or difficulty when doing that is when you, you what you use is your gauge to know when you need further treatment, not pain. <laughs> that's the ultimate place to be. My black belts are not using symptoms as their criteria. They're using stretching as their you know, way of knowing when they need to be worked on. Yeah, I've had this and cupping and Okay, cool. I don't think I've ever had like the red Mark come up. Marks come up. Okay. Um I can't make them come out. They only come out if there's something there. There's it's mm-hmm. it's a it's like carpet cleaner, but do all that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all kind of gristly and and you feel that inside it that's that's what's that's what we're trying to untangle. What is it? Is it like injury scar tissue? It's like a keloid or like a you ever have a scar on your skin? You rub your hand over it, you could feel it, yeah. right? It's internal. They're internal injuries and tears that if we did an autopsy and you know, take the skin off. Well, there it is. No, oh, thank you, Ed. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying they're underneath the skin. They're in the muscle fibers. They're in the tissue here. But you know, the skin didn't get cut. But that doesn't mean that there's not an injury un- underneath. So where are you, where are you from? I'm, rich, I'm from Ohio, actually, originally, okay. but okay. I live in L.A. L.A., oh boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm all the way over there. <laughs> but all right. I'm actually looking to move here. Mm-hmm. There we go. It's getting softer. I know, yeah. What I mainly feel here is that he just has to... It's like the cars aren't dented, but it's just filthy. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not like I need to do body work and framework on this. I just need to just wash it <laughs> and clay bar it a little bit and we can polish this. Um, you're young enough that we don't have you know, a lot of disc injury. So generally over time, if you waited another decade, you'd have a disc injury in here from this com- compensation and injury on the right, abuse on the left. But they probably took that MRI taken, was probably taken laying down, right? Yeah, I was laying down. And you see how that's kind of a little silly? <laughs> right, you're not... Oh, yeah, I just, yeah, because you're not even you're, using your neck. Ed, Ed, you're a genius. I mean, there you go, buddy. I got you. There you go. There you go. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, not, not scary, right? A little scary? A little scary? Oh, right. <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> a little scary. No, I'm just kidding. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's scared. <laughs> you scared him. I really you have to lock on. Uh huh. Just a little greedy. There you go. Perfect. You're doing great. You're doing great. Like, are you just. When I'm sitting or standing, yes, sir. I can feel like I never had this, you know, right. shoulders in posture. Right, so that's and that's avoidance. Do you understand? When you're pinching nerves in your upper back, your body rolls the shoulder forward to open that up. Right? Oh, wow. It's because you have nerve pressure, it's it's your body there we go. Right. <laughs> you're getting away from it. Again, these are there's something that's in here that needs to be addressed so that you no longer feel the urge to get away from it. Right there, you know, that, whatever you want to call that, your room. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I can. Right there. Oh, jeez. Just look, look straight forward a little bit. Just try not to look so down so much. There, you. Okay. there you go, they're fine. There we go, perfect. There we go. There we go. You're doing great. This is the road that the nerves that leave your lower neck travel through to get to your arm, to get to your heart. They have to go through this tissue. So if this tissue is inflamed, it presents itself as a, the first thing that sort of punches the nerve in the face, <laughs> irritates it, makes it aggravated.
Mm-hmm. I was like, jeez. Mm-hmm. Mm. so tight mm-hmm. in that part. It's just, like I said, it finally overflowed and now the posture's changing and these are postural pains along with nerve. So if you irritate a nerve, the muscle that that nerve controls is gonna contract, right? So it's, a, it's like a tasering. The muscle contraction partly is irritation to the nerve, it's partially po- posture. Got to, finally got to its breaking point. Were you pretty flexible, like as a teenager? Yeah. Kid? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was a gymnast, and mm-hmm. I did like, do lots of yoga and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this has just made me, you know, I can't really do anything. Mm-hmm. It's just depressing, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs a chiropractor for a father. Uh, it's the only solution I find. Uh, yeah, that grew up with a chiropractor. In a world where there's no dentist, dental problems are going to be everywhere. <laughs> even, with, in, even in a world where there are dentistry, we still have problems. Without them, it's just good luck. And if we're not having any dental hygienist you know, or prevention, it's just going to amplify the problems. And we don't have any spinal hygienists, <laughs> people that guide us through the process of cleaning our spine. and making it, ensuring the whole spine works as a team. I was there, I didn't even know that was his elbow. Ah! What the heck is that? Is it his knuckles? Yes. Digging through my soul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just great. Have you worked on someone with muscles this tight? I would, I, I think we would say, objectively, they're not that tight. I felt objectively okay. way tighter. Now, subjectively, I understand internally, oh my gosh, Ed, <laughs> they feel like they're rock solid. Um, from the outside, do you understand? They're not. Mm-hmm. That's why I think it's a large percentage of this is neurological, right? So it's how, Ed, it feels that way. It feels inflamed inside, it feels tight. Sorry, you'll get my award for Titus. No, no, I'm, I'm teasing with 
glad that you know. Good. You don't have Titus back ward. It doesn't mean it's not tight though. <laughs> 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 you just don't got the top spot <laughs> for what he's felt. As. Postural stiffness, yeah. Postural mm -hmm. and guarding. What kind, of, what kind of gymnastics? Um, Everything? Yeah, comp yeah, competitive. I was really good at floor. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah. I quit when I was a teenager. Gotcha. I feel like my body would have been a lot worse if I stayed. Yeah. Well, I think about tumbling. You know, if you do yeah. that, you know, that's one of the worst things you can do to your spine. Yeah. You know, that part that kind of sets us up for problems when I'm not sure if this is surprising to anybody uh, your neck's not designed to hold the weight your whole body I'm not sure if that's novel or you know really it are you sure yeah no you're not supposed to put all your weight on your neck uh, putting your head on the ground and then rolling over it yeah it's not uh, it's uh, not good for your spine like chewing on hard ice cubes or hard candy it's not good for your teeth uh, are you sure Ed are you sure I can't chew on rocks Bones have not moved in a while. Mm -hmm. These have been stuck. Okay. Breathe in for me. Here we go, let it out, exhale. We're gonna stretch for a second, here we go, stretching, good. Breathe in, here we go, exhale, stretch, here we go. There you go, you okay? Yeah. It moved good, yeah, you good? Yeah, nice. There we go. <laughs> Breathe in for me. Here we go, exhale, stretching. Good, breathe in, it's okay bud, exhale. Good, okay, all right, Good job. Right, and then look straight forward, turn your head gently, turn it side to side, see how we think. That feels way better. <laughs> I feel like I just slept. <laughs> I feel like I just woke up. It's awesome. All right, go ahead and tilt your head to the left a little bit. Tilt your head left. There we go, yep. Right. Tilt your head to the left. Okay. <laughs> your, your ears. Go ahead and look, uh, go ahead and tilt to the right for me, tilt your head right. That's okay. It's alright. You've already moved here. Tilt to the right. I love that one. <laughs> okay. I got you. Yeah. Okay, good. You jam these toes. Yeah. Well, these two joints here are like, <laughs> they don't want to separate. That makes sense. You've been, you know, being on your toes, gymnastics, or, you know, just life. you got to get the weight back on your heels. There's too much weight on the toes to get all jammed. That's okay. Oh, it's wow. just a copy of my thumb. So it's literally it's the closest thing I can do to give you a retainer 
that will hold you where you belong. Remember I mentioned that curved neck position, mm -hmm. so that's what's going to ultimately take the pressure off the nervous system and everything I do on the table, adjustments, massage, is all prepped to make this safe and possible. Head back for me. There we go. And then just relax. There you go. Oh, there we go. Leg straight for me if you can. And just take a nap. Yep. This is going to feel odd. If this feels normal, you don't need to be here. Okay? It's going to feel a little, this feels awkward maybe, or not exactly where my spine wants to be. <laughs> it's like orthodontistry. It's designed to be used with observation of a doctor that's guiding you like a Sherpa to Mount Everest. <laughs> you can't just, I'm, I'm, I'm Mount Everest today, I'm going to climb this mountain. You know, you're supposed to have, you have, a, you have a guide. And we're trying to about every minute move one inch. You start from your upper back down to your middle back, kind of emulating my roller when I was rolling your back. Mm -hmm. You just, a lot of this is a poor mockery of me. <laughs> yeah, you need to, especially the first few times you do that, I want you to move it. Don't stay in one position too long. Mm -hmm. You're, you're trying to do 20 minutes just like your neck. 20 minutes is a real number for how long it takes to change posture. Nobody's ever told you to do this, right? Nobody. I mean, you, you've, this. Done it, you've done it yourself, but nobody's told you to do it. Or no. have you? No, I've never done this. You've never done this? Okay, gotcha. Like moving and okay. my legs. Oh, it's, it's about time. How does that feel? Pretty tight in your chest? Yeah. yeah. So the, this is ultimately we have to stretch your shoulders back. Now your arms don't always have to be above your head. You can like a clock, put them aside. You know all these angles. Let your shoulders relax. Try to let your shoulders drop back. You know this all has to stretch. But uh, we have to make the back part of your spine compressible so that we actually can open up the front. When the back gets so inflamed, you actually can't open open the front because the back won't come together. Come together. All right, bud. Yeah. Very good. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you.